Hello and welcome back to another Royal Reviewer video and today is the 17th of March 2023. It is St. Patrick's Day so happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody who celebrates today. Uh, I am wearing the Duchess of Cambridge brooch and I am wearing the Honeysuckle tiara just in case you wanted to know. I know a lot of you wanted my tiaras back so here they are. Um, I still need to bring all of my collection over into this house. Anyway, without further ado, let's just get straight into the, into the point of this video. We will be talking a little bit about St. Patrick's Day and William and Catherine have been out today. So we'll talk about those at the end of the video. But the main purpose of this video, I've wanted to talk for a while because there was a story that came out and I've got it in front of me now um, about the Queen's, or rather the Queen's, the, the late Queen's estate, her, um, her fortune and how it's possibly been distributed between family members and how the UK deals with sovereign to sovereign inheritance. So I think there was a lot of confusion about this. And I've actually seen this story a few times. I just haven't got around to covering it. So, so I'm reading from, I think it was the first article about this in the Telegraph that actually says that Prince Andrew has been bewildered that he has yet to receive inheritance from the late Queen. Uh, Queen Elizabeth II's fortune was passed directly to King Charles, who has yet to share it with the Duke of York, sources claim. So there's a little bit kind of what the, the, head, the headline itself tells me a few things. So it says that he's yet to receive inheritance. So that tells me that perhaps there was inheritance and that the, entire, the entirety of the Queen's uh, fortune, personal fortune, was not solely left to Charles, that perhaps there were some personal uh, requests, bequeaths, if you like, um, to members of the family. Now, of course, um, even with the majority of the late Queen's estate going sovereign to sovereign, such as the Duchy of Lancaster, anything, you know, held in trust for the nation, so to speak, will be sovereign to sovereign transfer. Um, however, there is scope within royal wills to leave personal effects. You could leave, you could leave um, art, you could leave personal jewellery, you could leave gifts of money. But if it's not sovereign to sovereign, then the recipient, it would fall under um, the normal inheritance tax rules of the United Kingdom at the time of the, of the former sovereign's passing. So let's just say, I don't know, Queen Elizabeth chose I'm just literally plucking things out of the air here. Let's say she chose to give all of her existing great-grandchildren a million pounds and her grandchildren, all of them, five million pounds each. And, I don't know, her children got ten million pounds each. This is just me speculating. Uh, then that those gifts of money would be subject to relevant tax um, over the above allowed threshold. So we don't know how much money the Queen was actually worth. We have a rough idea. Now, I have seen many, many wild estimates of how much the, the British sovereign is actually worth. Many incorrect. Um, I remember one of my favourite times of the year was when the Sunday Times Rich List came out. And I used to read it back in the 90s. And it's a little bit like Forbes, if you're, uh, if you're from the US. Um, so it's, Basically, uh, they have they work out how much someone is worth from tax documents, and how much property value rises have gone up. They take a lot into consideration. So it's, you know, <laughs> anticipated to be at least the most accurate est estimations uh, that are going around. And I remember that back in the early 90s, they used to take into account things like um, the Crown Estates, the Duchy of Lancaster. They used to take that as the monarch's personal wealth. So I remember the Queen at one point being listed as something like £16 billion, pounds, one of the richest um, you know, people in Europe, in the world. And then I think it was more towards going towards the late 90s, they changed and they basically concluded that because the sovereign cannot sell any of these lands or properties um, for their own personal gain, that it's actually held in trust for the nation and therefore is not part of the sovereign's personal wealth. So they discounted it. Then I think the monarch was kind of hovering and hovering around the 300 million, 
to, I think probably the last count was about 360 to 380 million pounds. So it's not as wild as some, some outlets are reporting. It is, let's just say I would expect the Queen's, the late Queen's personal fortune to be below 400 million pounds, which is still an awful lot of money. But all of that is pretty much expected to have gone sovereign to sovereign, any jewellery, art collections, stamp collections, the Royal Stud Farm, pretty much everything has gone directly to Charles, unless there is anything stipulated in the will. So going back to the article about Prince Andrew, if the title is has anything to be believed, then perhaps there was something in the will that hasn't yet been, been paid yet. Um, or perhaps, you know, he's literally, I mean, it says here, um, after the Queen's death last September, now they estimate, well, they, they put her £650 million duchy of Lancaster estate was automatically left to King Charles. Well, he can't give any money from that because he can't sell anything. So that's a little bit misleading. However, Prince Andrew is said to have told friends he feels despair that the King has not shared any of his new wealth among his siblings. Well, that is a little bit different. What Andrew, I think, there is saying, if it is to be believed, is that he thinks that Andrew should just voluntarily give him money rather than anything particularly being left to him um, in accordance to the Queen's will. So according to publications, Prince Andrew feels an amount of resentment at the situation. Now, we've already had the stories of potentially Charles cutting him off well, not cutting him off entirely, but lowering the amount of money that he gives him, therefore putting his home at Royal Lodge at risk of not being able to afford the upkeep of it. So a palace source, source apparently told the publication that the Queen's fortune had passed directly from monarch to monarch because that was the most tax efficient way to transfer it. In 1993, new legislation was passed under John Major. Now, this was the roughly roundabout time of the Windsor Castle fire. So in 1992, the Queen had agreed to pay income tax and Prince Charles had as well. So in 1993, we got some additional legislation meant to deal with inheritance tax, um, which meant that um, sovereign to sovereign inheritance uh, and transfer of assets from one sovereign to another uh, was left entirely to the new monarch as opposed to being divided among family members. So it basically set a formal precedence that monarch to monarch transfer was to be expected. But a friend close to Prince Andrew has said that Andrew is in despair. He's been left completely in the dark. Andrew is a member of the family. Uh, for God's sake, yet he has no idea this was coming. I gather he's checked it out and it's true. It's all gone on a monarch to monarch. Well, that's as expected. Uh, what's he meant to do? Go cap in hand to his older brother to keep a roof over his head? He, well, he may. Uh, things are going from bad to worse. It's a disaster. Well, there we go. Uh, <laughs> but the one thing that I did want to kind of compare and contrast this to was actually a statement that was put out, and I'll share it on screen, a statement that was put out uh, regarding the will of the late Queen Mother. So we have not had a similar statement, to my knowledge, regarding the late Queen's will. Um, like I say, wills are, are often of, of monarchs, important people like this are actually sealed. In the UK, we do actually have access. You can pay money and you can access regular people's wills. As long as you know their name and their address, you can actually pay money and obtain a copy of the will. Um, monarchs are a little bit different. They can apply to have the, uh, the legal documents sealed for, I think it's 90 years or more. We saw that with Prince Philip's will. The media were not able to get a look at his will. Uh, I mean, people in the future, historians in 90 to 100 years time, will be able to look back and see what was in it and we'll be able to get a clearer idea. But in our lifetime, um, unless I'm pickled and preserved, my brain in a jar, I probably won't get a chance to find out what was in the Queen's will. Uh, <laughs> but we did have a statement regarding from the palace. This is on the official Palace website regarding the Queen Mother's will. Now, this was published the 17th of May 2002, and it says the following statement is issued by the press secretary to the Queen. 
Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, has bequeathed her entire estate, which mainly comprises the contents of her houses, to the Queen. Uh, in her will, she asked the Queen to make certain bequests to members of her staff, and these bequests will be subject to inheritance tax in the normal way. The Queen has decided that the most important of Queen Elizabeth's pictures and works of art should be transferred to the Royal Collection. Some of these items, including works by Monet, Nash and Carl Fabergé from Queen Elizabeth's collection will be on display in the Royal Treasures exhibition, which is due to open at the new Queen's Gallery, Buckingham Palace, on the 22nd of May. It is expected that the Prince of Wales will move from St James's Palace to Clarence House, which will become the Prince of Wales' office and official London residence. So that, of course, did happen. Since fire safety and refurbishment work will be required at Clarence House, before this move takes place, it is, it is expected that the majority of the costs of this work will be met from the property services grant in aid. So they are clearly outlining that it won't be paid for directly out of Charles's own pocket. It is intended that the ground floor of Clarence House will be opened to the public during August and September, which it was, and I think it still is today, there is an open season, in future years once the fire safety and refurbishment work has been completed. I think that was put in there as a way to justify the cost of the uh, renovations of Clarence House. Subject to discussions with the Crown Estate, the Duke of York is planning to dispose of his lease of Sunny Hill Park, which he did, and move to Royal Lodge, which he did. Extensive refurbishment will be required, and this will be paid for by the Duke of York, either directly or as part of the rent if he moves into the house. So he did pay it directly. Uh, there has been no rent since. Burke Hall is a residence on the Queen's private Balmoral estate, which the Queen had made available to Queen Elizabeth as well as the Prince of Wales. The Prince of Wales will continue to make use of the house, which he did. And of course, now that he actually has inher inherited Balmoral entirely, it remains in his possession and uh, he is believed to have used it as a base uh, even as king rather than the main Balmoral castle. So I just thought it was interesting that a statement was put out um, and we haven't had one over six months later regarding uh, the late queen. I just thought it was very interesting. You can kind of see how things were laid out. Um, will we get in the future something similar? that lays out what is going to happen to other members of the family with regards to the properties and housing. Ah, I can't wait to find out. Um, with regards to where the late Queen's will and Prince Philip's will and Princess Margaret's will are being held. Now, I always thought, I believe that the Round Tower in Windsor is part of the, it contains most of the royal archives. So I always thought that wills, that kind of thing, were held there. But I did read a publication which said, which hinted that they're actually held um, by by lawyers somewhere in London. So I'm thinking, you know, it, it could be somewhere really important in London where they're being held and and sealed. Um, but one important thing I would like to, know, to to kind of mention is that we do have wills that have been sealed that are now over ninety years. So that sealing could technically be unsealed. And we could kind of get to know some of the former monarchs or important royal people's wills. I don't think the media really has any interest in it. So I don't think they've kind of pressed to have some of these wills opened and revealed to the public. But I think there is some untapped information there for modern historians to take a look back and actually see how wills were written over 90 years ago now. Going back to the sovereign's, um, I suppose, net worth, that is expected now to go up because Prince Charles had his own money that he'd, um, that he'd accrued, I suppose, over, over all the years of, of him being alive, basically, and mainly as Prince of Wales. So I, it, it is expected that when the rich list comes out, I think it's roughly round about now, sort of April time, when it comes, well, it's of March, end of March, April time, uh, possibly even as late as May. I'll have to check it out. But the rich list is coming up, and that obviously will be updated to reflect the new monarch's personal wealth. So you could expect 
um, the Queen's wealth to be added to Charles's wealth, and then you'll get a personal net worth that is that will be fairly accurate, I should say. Although one never knows entirely the true value of of their net worth. Um, should Prince Andrew or any of the royals get any more money off Charles? That's entirely up to Charles. Once once the transfers have been done, then you know it really is up to. Um, good grace and favour, I suppose, and goodwill on Charles's part, um, and how much I suppose he wants Prince Andrew not to go out into the world and make his own way, uh, which could could cause its own problems if Prince Andrew decides that he wants to pursue uh, maybe having a book or maybe doing any more interviews. Oh, heaven forbid! Uh, I don't know, but that is up to King Charles. Okay, so back to St. Patrick's Day. Now, I will pop some photos up whilst I'm talking, but the Princess of Wales looked absolutely amazing. Now, William, I spoke about William. Some people pulled me up on it saying I shouldn't have spoken about William um, not looking as, you know, glamorous. But what I was really talking about was that the, the, the royal men in general just kind of wear suits and it's a little, for me personally, it's a little dull and boring. Uh, but what we got to see today in like these really kind of you know ceremonial events is that the men can dress up and they can put on a display of their own. William looked really, really good um, in his uniform, but Catherine was still the jewel of the crown on this event. She was wearing, now she favours Catherine Walker quite a lot. It was a Catherine Walker coat. She was wearing a beautiful, gorgeous shamrock brooch. It wasn't her first St. Patrick's Day parade, but it was as Colonel-in-Chief of the Irish Guards alongside Prince William. Um, like I say, I think she looked absolutely incredible. Um, but again, we're seeing a little bit of the Handmaid's Tale creeping in, aren't we? We're seeing, uh, I mean, we saw the new Duchess of Edinburgh looking very much like Mrs Putnam from The Handmaid's Tale. And we're seeing the same kind of colours coming out in Catherine today. So, but anyway, it is entirely appropriate with the sort of green and the turquoise. Um, she just looks so elegant. I love her hat. The millinery is on point. She's teamed it with a pair of gorgeous emerald and diamond earrings. The, the, the gold shamrock brooch looks fantastic. I love the button detail. I love the little kind of pleats um going off on the bias on the shoulders shoulder pads are back catherine is wowing in the most gorgeous shoulder pads i can possibly imagine definitely a little bit of power dressing going on the shoes match perfectly like i say william also looks fantastic i love the uniform um and they posed for pictures looking very very happy i love the group shots um this was death everyone looked so smiley and happy it was definitely uh, you know, a show of of happiness. Um, I think, and, you know, there was a speech made as well um, when they took to the stage. Um, very, a very momen momentous occasion for Catherine, um, and one that I think truly sees her stepping up into her new role as Princess of Wales. And I think it kind of shows the sort of queen, the sort of monarchs, uh, if you like, um, sort of, you know, although, you know, Catherine will not be, she'll be a queen consort in the same way that Camilla is a consort. But as their majesties, when William becomes king, I think it shows the sort of duo that they will be. Um, yeah, no, just really, really happy day. And I think it shows, I think, for the royal family that they are putting recent troubles behind them. Um, they're taking the high road. They are not going to talk um, in public about certain family issues. They are just going to get on with the work that's involved. And I think, uh, you know, Camilla is, is one of these royals that just goes to show how you can turn around such a bad public profile. Let's not forget Camilla had a horrendous public profile uh, shortly after and, and around the time of Diana's passing. And through sheer hard work, determination, tenacity, um, dedication, service to the nation, just getting on with it. Camilla's um, public image has completely been rehabilitated in many people. Not everyone's mind. Some people hold grudges. Um, but in the majority, I mean, you know, let's, it was untenable to think of Camilla as being 
anything other than just the wife uh, of Charles. Now we see her, you know, being crowned as queen, uh, not a sovereign queen, but crowned as queen, as a queen consort alongside King Charles at the upcoming coronation. And we have come such a long way. And that is in no part due to the hard work, service, determination that she has put in. William and Kate are doing the same thing. They are not talking about recent family problems. They are just getting on with it. And I think that is going to do the, the world of good in the future and in the public image. Thank you for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, then please give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to share on social media. And of course, do hit the bell so that you know whenever I upload a new video. So from me, to you all, and goodbye.